Hi, and welcome back to the Let Yourself Sparkle podcast. Today, we have a very special guest, Allison Huey, a board-certified music therapist and advocate for creative mental health self-care. She founded Carolina Music Therapy and Compose Your Self-Care, where she guides people to use music to connect and manage stress and anxiety. Today, she will share with us how music can be a powerful catalyst for comfort, coping, and motivation, and can not only help us heal, but helps us feel seen and heard, feel connected to other people, to our culture, and to ourselves. She shares practical tips that are scientifically proven to help you lower stress and anxiety and boost joy. Hi, Allison. Thank you so much for joining us today. Let's get started. Tell us about the amazing work that you do. As a music therapist, I'm trained in using clinical approaches, and uh, I've worked with people across the lifespan and kids on up to end of life and people with dementia. And um, it's just so awesome to see how music can um, can motivate participation, can uh, facilitate communication in powerful ways and connection and um, how, how it can almost be like magic sometimes. But and then there's the, um, the brain chemistry benefits too, like uh, with whether it be listening to music before a situation where you're feeling kind of nervous or um, hesitant or um, unsure, or if you're feeling anxious or depressed. So um, music, listening to preferred music that you enjoy has been shown to help boost serotonin, dopamine, um, and decrease cortisol levels. Um, so those things have been associated and, and research. So there's a lot of exciting things with, uh, you know, both what we're feeling and then things that are measurable in the body. And then also with brain imaging coming such a long way in the past 10, 15 years, like seeing how music lights up all over the brain. It's like a disco party across your synapses, like that it can be super powerful and, um, and help kind of change the channel and in our brain like if we're on a loop of negative thoughts or a loop of you know feeling in a certain way that it can help us modulate out of that that is so cool it's so cool it's not only that you feel it but it can actually be measured and confirmed yes yeah yeah it's one of those things too and you zoom out and like look at music throughout our lives it's a continuous thread from the time we're kids and our mom sing lullabies to us or grandparents and siblings and so on like through celebrations and big moments of identity formation in our teenage years and like joyful moments like you know you go to a party or go to a gathering and there's probably going to be music playing like Mm -hmm. um and it like gatherings and parties aren't the best description right now in the midst of COVID, but yeah, you get what I'm saying. Like any kind of big gathering, like a sports event or um, a wedding, a graduation, like music's a big central part of that. Uh, religious services, like music's around us all the time, uh, whether it be purposeful or not. Like if we turn on the TV, you know, we're going to hear music in the background of our favorite show or a movie that's shaping our mood and mm-hmm. guiding your anticipation. Um, you know, and we hear uh, music and commercials all the time that's geared toward uh, shifting our mood or grabbing our attention. Um, so I'm fascinated by the way music can move us and connect us. Can you share like some magical examples of like transformations that you've seen where like people kind of came back to life or um, how music, how they were able to connect with the moment or um, snap out of a bad mood or any anything like incredible that you've seen through your work? Uh, one of the, the biggest things that comes to my mind is uh, a group in long-term care that I was in um, probably about a year and a half ago I started working with a community in my area and um, these people were in skilled care nursing. So, you know, most of them are in wheelchairs. Some of them are in like jerry chairs, which is kind of a a lounger chair on wheels. Um, Many of them didn't verbally communicate much, if at all. Mm -hmm. Um, And so a big part of my music therapy group, so that population is using rhythm instruments. And that way, um, you know, there's 
a way for people to participate if they don't feel comfortable singing or maybe if um, they have impairment with you know vocalizing that sort of thing um, so there is a woman whose first language is Spanish and primarily um, is nonverbal and um, she seemed to be very withdrawn as I first engaged with her the first few visits and um, I uh, handed her a maraca and she went from like laying back in the jerry chair with her hands very guarded against her body to actually like reaching up and shaking it wow. with force and like smiled and showed affect changes. And um, I know very little Spanish, but I, you know, like, I started to speak with her in some Spanish phrases and she would reply and actually speak. And um, so that was a really powerful thing to see. I got the chills when you were saying that. Yeah. That's, awesome. That's incredible. Thank you. That yeah, is- it's it's a blessing to see those moments and, um, you know, to see people's mood shift. And for the staff, too, like there were one or two staff members in the area who kind of like looked over like, whoa, like she can do that. Like, yeah, I think that, you know, often um, it's a surprise for caregivers to see uh, a different side of resonance when they're engaged in music. Wow, that's amazing. I wish there was like a a woman who who wasn't um, speaking and then somebody came in and was singing like some church hymn. Yes. And it brought yes. us to life. Like that, that was just like so, so incredible to see. It's, music is amazing. Music is so amazing. It's- Naomi Fayol was in that video um, <laughs> that shared and she um, founded validation therapy mm-hmm. and it's something I would love to get trained in. But again, um, meeting a person where they are and validating where they are, validating their their feelings. And um, with that video, that woman um, you know, initially looks very withdrawn and she um, knows that that person uh, has a faith background of Christianity and start singing Jesus Loves Me um, very close to her at her level and she has her hand in hers and just providing gentle touch and then some gentle movement to the beat and then mm-hmm. I think the woman starts singing along. He did. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That so was- it's so beautiful. Yeah. I was so like specifically touched by that too because I thought it was so cool that like the music was able to like cross cultures and cross religions and like it was a Jewish woman singing, yes, you know, songs about Jesus to this woman who, you know, those songs meant so much to her, and that's what brought her back. And it's it's just so beautiful. It's like such a gift that you can give to somebody else if you allow yourself to step out of like who you are and just see what that person needs in the moment. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. Um. So I I think there's so many ways that music can be beneficial throughout our lives and different layers. And there's certainly many things that family members and loved ones can do for uh, people who are diagnosed with dementia or Alzheimer's. Um, One of the biggest ones is, you know, looking at their preferred music and just playing some songs and watching for reactions. Mm -hmm. So if someone, you know, lights up when they hear a song, you know, roll with that and maybe explore some more songs by that artist or in that style. Um, if someone, um, you know, grimaces or holds their, their ears, you know, that kind of thing, then, um, maybe that's a sign they're not a fan of that. Uh, and sometimes that can be difficult when the person can't really verbalize Mm -hmm. or, um, you know, that's difficult for them, but you can always look for nonverbal signs look for, uh, you know, body movements. Like a lot of times I've seen clients who, um, you know, seem to be minimally responsive, but you put on music and their toe starts tapping wow. or their head starts, starts bobbing. So, um, yeah, just gauging those things. Um, and then exploring more of that as you see what they're responding to. What about for people with like severe anxiety or severe depression or just like overwhelm. I feel like so many people these days, even people that don't have a diagnosis or didn't, you know, never used to have an issue with debilitating stress. Like I feel like everybody is more anxious now than they've ever been. 
So like, yes. do, I, do you have any tips for how people can use music to kind of calm their nerves or lift their spirits? That's, that's really a big part of my love of music is uh, because it's helped me with anxiety and depression most of my life. Mm-hmm. And I um, had signs of that when I was in elementary school, but of course back then, um, the age I'm at now, like when I was a kid, that wasn't really something that was discussed as much with kids. It was like, oh, you're getting close to being a teenager. It's probably hormones um, and that kind of thing. Uh, so um, I really leaned into music as a way to escape and um, feel seen and feel validated in emotions um, at that point. And also um, around that time started playing in band and started playing flute and um, with that playing a wind instrument I had to um, adapt my breathing and do deeper breathing so um, yeah it's it was one of those things that I didn't really think about as much that I was um, integrating as a coping mechanism until later on Mm -hmm. and having more uh, of a flare-up with depression in like the past six years or so and then kind of ebb and ebb and flow uh with that and anxiety especially this past year and um exploring more ways to to use that as a way to to cope so um for me with anxiety like in general like um if i'm not like panic attack level anxiety um using music um that's kind of a medium pace and breathing with that is very helpful for me. Um, I'm a big fan of box breathing and I got introduced to that via Brene Brown and one of her books, I think Dare to Lead. Um, And sometimes it's called other things like calm breathing or tactical breathing. So you inhale for four counts, then hold for four counts, exhale for four counts, and then hold for four counts Mm -hmm. like a box. Um, so each side is equal. Um, and I know for some people doing things like this with the breath can be more anxiety provoking. So like try it. If it's not a good fit, then try something else. Um, but, um, with that, I love doing that with music. So instead of a count, a beat. So, um, you know, if you're listening to music that doesn't sound like it sways back and forth, like it's not a waltz, like a one, two, three, one, two, three kind of thing, then you can totally use box breathing with that. Mm-hmm. And as you you begin, you know, you're counting beats. And then as you repeat that pattern, the music becomes kind of like a container for you to continue that pattern right. without having to think about it as much, if that makes sense. Yeah, cool. um, so like one of the first ones I thought about um, is... Three Little Birds by Bob Marley. Mm. So that one's got a good steady beat. So, um, you know, again, breathing in. Da, 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 da. Hold. Da, 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 da. Exhale. Da, 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 da. Hold. Da, 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 da. You know, and you can just continue on with that. And then, um, yeah, that's another layer of of music and anxiety slash depression coping that you know, choosing songs that have messages that you love to integrate into your spirit and into your thinking um so uh a big one for me um when i was having a ton of anxiety um probably 15 years ago was um the beatles song i feel fine mm. um and just repeating that, um, you know, instead of I'm in love with her and I feel fine, like whatever, I'm sitting here and I feel fine or whatever situation, you know, it was. So you kind of use the music, you use the lyrics as like your own like positive affirmations. Yeah, yeah. And you know, music gets stuck in our heads and we use music to learn the ABCs. And um, there's some songs from elementary school that I remember about like parts of speech that are still stuck in my head that'll pop pop in there every now and then. So um, I've started exploring doing musical affirmations and started doing that for my uh, 100 day project this year. And that's been a lot of fun. So just every day having an affirmation that I set to music and sing, play on an instrument and share. 
I love that. So that can be like a daily practice that somebody can do like, you know, both things, you know, they can pick like mm -hmm. a song that they want to breathe to and do like the box breathing. And then they could also just listen to some positive music to just uplift themselves. Yeah. That's awesome. What about if somebody is like in a panic state, is there anything that music can help with? Like if someone's having like a panic attack? I think it really depends on the person. Yeah. Um, and sometimes if I'm in that kind of state, my, my sensory overwhelm kicks in. Mm -hmm. So softer music, um, music that's uh, not as complex um, feels really good for me. Um, you know, again, everyone's preferences are different. Everyone's experience of anxiety is different. Um, but, uh, music that's predictable, familiar, mm. um, can be helpful. I'm also a big fan of using music that matches your mood. Nice. So, um, I kind of equate it to like, if you're having a panic attack and somebody tells you to calm down, it's not going to help. <laughs> like, no, like you do not understand. Like, so, um, you know, having music that can help validate what you're feeling and match your energy it can be useful and then gradually shifting from there can you so off the top of your head yeah yeah totally so um my husband a couple of weeks ago or maybe a month or two ago was having like a really crappy day at work and having some anxiety and um i uh i made him a, a derage playlist <laughs> it was like uh, you know, heavy metal type stuff, like starting out like headbanging, like rah, and then gradually stepping down. Um, there's a band called Apocalyptica that's like metal with cellos mm. and more instrumental stuff. So like gradually stepping down nice. through a couple of songs. Um, so, you know, there's so many different elements with music that impact our mind, body, and spirit that as we're listening, um, and so, you know, there's tempo, there's the, the sounds, the instruments involved, the words, the, uh, the rhythmic complexity, you know, if it's just a steady beat or if there's a lot of, um, da -da 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 like some of the, the current music has that like stutter kind of thing. Um, there's uh, volume. Uh, so some pieces might be about the same volume all the way. Other pieces get really loud in the middle and then get softer. Um, there's, you know, keys and major and minor tonalities. There's our, um, our previous experience of that song and that genre. Right. So, you know, we have certain songs that we hear from our high school days and they immediately transport us back to that time. Um, for better or worse, like sometimes songs can be a trigger for bad memories or bad feelings, um, or tough feelings. But, um, I think it's also helpful to draw upon that. Um, if you have songs that remind you of times in your life that were super happy or felt very safe, um, that those can also be good ones to, to go to when you're feeling anxious. I like that and kind of like recognizing it and listening to yourself so like if you're listening to a song and it's bringing up it's triggering like negative emotions like turn it off <laughs> yeah and like there's a time and a place I feel like you know, if you have that experience and there's things that come up for you that you feel like whoa I thought I dealt with that like mm -hmm. that happens <laughs> like totally that happens that we can go through things with a therapist and think you know that we've processed everything and then it comes back up and like mm -hmm. Yeah, that maybe it's time to, to process that with a therapist again um, if it's something that's bubbled up and very uncomfortable. But I don't recommend like making yourself listen to a song that brings back negative stuff. What about like if I know like when I've got something that I'm like not, you know, panicked about, but something that like I'm I'm a little nervous about, like a meeting or a presentation or getting my COVID vaccine or whatever, like, yeah, you know, like I like to kind of pump myself up. So like, I'll, I'll listen to like uplifting, you know, upbeat music. I don't know. Is that something that you recommend or? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so 
there's the effect, you know, psychologically with music that we have the associations with, like, you know, if we um, remember doing this awesome thing that we were super proud of in the past and the music that we were listening to at that point of our lives, you know, we listen to that and those feelings can come back to us. If we listen to music with um, a, a fairly upbeat, steady beat then that's gonna um boost our arousal level physically that's gonna like you know get our nervous system ready for movement um you, you see this all the time in like um fight songs you know and football fight songs or walk-up songs and in, in sports that um you know pumps up everybody and pumps up the player as they go up or um in politics you know, when people are campaigning, they have a walk-up song. Um, so uh, I love that that idea. So I'm curious, you mentioned your COVID vaccine. Like, did you have songs that you listened to before you went and got your shot? You know what? I hopped on on my Nordic track bike, and it just has its own playlist. I was, like, listening to, like, Dua Lipa. <laughs> like, uh-huh. whatever came on, it was, like, some Lady Gaga. And I don't even, am I saying the name right, Dua Lipa? I don't even know. But, I don't, I'm not sure. I've, I've heard of Dua Lipa, but I'm not sure how you pronounce the name. <laughs> I don't do, I don't own these albums or whatever. It was just like whatever, like, yeah. songs like came on to the Nordic track playlist. And I was just like, I need this right now. <laughs> like, gets me out of my yeah. head. It pumps me up in the moment. And the physical movement, too. I think that's especially powerful when you pair that yes. with yeah, upbeat music and moving, getting that energy flowing. I know, like, then, my kids, like, I know, like, you know, they're distance learning and they're, they're little kids and it's like depressing for them. You know, they, they used to like, you know, run around the playground before class. So I feel like what something that we've started in our house is I, I turn on like Taylor Swift in the morning or like sometimes Demi Lovato or like something fun and upbeat. And we just dance it out. I tell them we have to do like a five song dance party (laughs) before class. I love it. Yes, totally. Yeah. That's a great way to start the day. Yeah. yeah. Do you tap dance? Is that So <laughs> I I did tap dance. Like I took almost a year of lessons when I was like I was seven years old or something. Oh, and I can't remember why I quit. Like I started and then we were learning the choreography for a recital and then for some reason I just dropped out. And <laughs> Um, I always enjoyed it and yeah, I've loved as an adult, like doing Zumba and stuff like that. That's dance fitness. And, um, I decided, you know what, like I want to try tap dancing again. And so I ordered some tap shoes on Amazon this past year and they came in and I'm like, okay, like, where am I going to do this? And then they just kind of hung out in the box for a little while. Like, I don't know, like, I don't think I should do this on the hardwood floors and I can't do it on the carpet. Like, eh. and then, so finally I was like, I gave myself a deadline, like New Year's, like, I think I gave myself a resolution, like, I'm going to do this in January. And then I found some classes, um, or some tutorials on YouTube and went out in the garage and, and did some YouTube tutorials for tap dance and it was fun. And, um, I haven't done it since I need to do it again, but, um, that was fun. Yeah. And I love the, you know, thinking about things that we love to do as kids and Mm -hmm. the joy that that can bring. And there's also going to be the, the gap and the frustration of like, I'm growing up and I'm a beginner at this thing again. And, you know, but it can be so much fun and, um, such a joyful experience when we, you know, do it for fun. Yeah, like why not do it for fun? No, yeah, enough, like you might actually get good. <laughs> yeah, like I'm not trying out for the Rockets. I'm just doing this for fun, and like you know, I thought of you because and it's physically I, beneficial. I saw like I was like scrolling through Instagram through the reels, and I saw this woman doing like solo jazz. I don't know if you've heard of this, but I had never seen this before. Like I used to swing dance, like like you for like a year of my life like barely like I did it like in high yeah. school in friends I went maybe like you know 20 times and I I had so much fun and then that was like in the 10th grade and I hadn't done it since and then like maybe two weeks ago I saw this this video of this woman doing solo jazz and I'm like what is that it was like swing solo jazz so really watching it on YouTube and I've been practicing <laughs> awesome heck yeah 
I'm like, it's so much fun. I was thinking of you with your tap shoes. I'm like, what a good idea. Just, a, I don't need a partner. I can just do this in my office, put on the exactly. music and just follow along with the YouTube tutorial. <laughs> There's so much on the internet, like anything you want to learn, like you can get a start from YouTube or you know, researching online. It's, it's, it's an awesome day and age we live in. And it's so cool how like, <laughs> it takes you back. Like I'm like listening to swing music and I'm like thinking back to like the times that I was like having a blast in the ninth grade. And like, you know, I'm sure that's how you feel like putting on your tap shoes. It's like you remember being a little kid and like that feeling of just like being free and like yeah, having fun and not caring what anyone else thinks, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And I have to ask, you mentioned like in 10th grade doing swing dance. Was that in the, the days of like cherry pop and daddies <laughs> and squirrel nut zippers being popular? Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love their music and I love how that's a, a fun example of how musical styles can cross generations. Yes. And how things kind of, you know, ebb and flow and the way they come back. It's funny because like when I think of swing, I'm totally not thinking of the 50s. Like I'm thinking of the cherry pop and daddies. Yeah. So funny. Brian Setzer Orchestra and yeah. Was Save Ferris one? I'm trying to remember. There was like there was a girl swing band that really? I used to go see in Pomona. It was so much fun. It was I think it was more ska than swing, but it was Yeah. So fun. <laughs> That'll be a fun rabbit hole to go down later. I'm gonna totally go down that rabbit hole on Spotify later. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm like Yeah. You're inspiring to me to put on my jazz shoes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> do it. When you say jazz shoes, yes. I just my converse. <laughs> I'm just putting on my regular shoes. <laughs> Love it. Well, is there anything that you'd like people to know about what you do or how to reach you? Um, I have a Facebook group called Composure Self Care, and it's all about music and mental health wellness. Um, and, um, totally free. I love to, to share humor in there too and various things on creativity and mental health. So please pop on over and join that if you're on Facebook. And um, also on Instagram at Composure Self Care and love sharing uh, resources and things there and always open to messages and questions on music and mental health, music therapy, um, all those things. And um, I also have a freebie on my link tree on making a playlist for yourself to get out of work mode and to home mode for your commute. So your musical commute and again, using that idea of the ISO, ISO principle and meeting yourself where you are energetically and emotionally and then gradually shifting that through music. Um, so yeah, and if you'd love to know more on music therapy, also check out uh, musictherapy.org is the American Music Therapy Association website. There's a ton of research on there and information about um, you know, finding a music therapist in your area. And um, there's some, uh, I think they just started a website for uh, music therapy and MS as well with some, some free resources on that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Awesome. Is there one thing you want to leave people with? Like if they could start a habit right now or start like a daily routine that could possibly boost happiness and be music related, like what would you say? Like what would be like the one thing if, if someone was going to like take one thing away from this and like start a new habit, what do you think it should be? I have to kind of lean on your idea from earlier that you mentioned that you're doing with your kids because uh, that's been helpful for me too and and playing a song that uh is energetic and upbeat and uplifting in the morning and either moving to it dancing to it stretching to it um you know getting up and being with that song so mm -hmm. not listening to it while you're multitasking and like reading something or scrolling facebook but like getting up and allowing yourself to be moved by that music mm -hmm. um so for me lately, that one's been Thank You, Lord by Bob Marley. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, a song with, with words that are meaningful for you, uh, a song that makes you feel good. And sometimes you can get burned out on a song, and that mm -hmm. totally happens. Like, I don't know if 
you've ever had like a song on the radio like um gosh uptown funk and happy that got played out so much Mm -hmm. uh like they're like fun happy songs but then after a while it's like oh this song again so like you know totally rotate your songs every now and then so you don't get tired of it but I think that practice in the morning helps set the tone for your day Mm -hmm. and can make such a big difference in how you see things and how you experience things throughout your day love it thank you so much thanks so much you're welcome for all of this it was so nice to see your face (laughs) likewise so fun to talk to you thank you for having me today Yay. Okay, so let's talk about the takeaways. Listen to music to really let yourself sparkle from the inside out. Music can light up all over the brain and can actually be seen in brain imaging technology. It can help you shift your thoughts from negative thoughts to positive thoughts. Music can help you connect with yourself, can help you connect with the people around you. There are brain chemistry benefits to lowering the stress hormone cortisol and also boosting your body's natural joy-boosting hormones, serotonin and dopamine. There are so many benefits to listening to good music. Music doesn't just make you feel good, but also the effects can be scientifically measured and confirmed. So go turn on some amazing music, listen to upbeat songs in the morning, have a dance party, rock out to your favorite songs that you haven't listened to in a long time, and Share this episode with anyone who you feel could use a happiness boost. Go to youcanchoosetobehappy.com to download my free book that'll share with you 12 easy steps to live a happier life. Anyway, subscribe to the podcast and I will see you next week.